Do you want to know what it is? The 3D printing community is everywhere. It is all around us, even now in this very room. You can see it when you open up YouTube or when you turn on your printer. You can feel it when you download an STL, when you go to Reddit, when you buy your filament. It is the community that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Nathan. Like everyone else, you were born into recommended videos, born into a prison of sponsored content and affiliate links. A prison for your mind. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the 3D printing community is. You have to see it for yourself. You take the blue SD card, the story ends. You go back to your subscription feed and choose another video. You take the red flash drive, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the benchy hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering you is the truth, nothing more. Follow me. Today we're going to be looking at the Creality K1 and the Bamboo Lab P1P. I'm going to be comparing these printers head to head to see which one is best. So, let's get started. The best way to do any comparison like this is to use a scoreboard. So, we've got our scoreboard here. Let me just uh, put a little hole in this and we'll hang this up on the wall. One of the most important factors for any buyer is price. The Creality K1 is retailing for $5.99 and the Bamboo Lab P1P is retailing for $6.99. Additionally, with the P1P, you have to pay for shipping. So for that category, we're gonna give one point to the K1. Another thing that's important to a lot of buyers is build volume. And the K1 having a 220 by 220 millimeter build area is quite sufficient for most tasks. However, the Bamboo Lab P1P has a 256 by 256 build area. So it's slightly bigger, and therefore a point goes to the Bamboo Lab. Related to print volume is the size of the machine. And the Creality K1 has an advantage here because it has a smaller print volume, therefore they can fit everything into a smaller package. It measures 16 centimeters wide. The P1P is about 39 centimeters wide. So really what you're seeing is those three centimeters of additional build area, just stretching the machine out. So overall, they're both very efficiently packaged and I'll call this one a tie. And in terms of absolute print speed, I'm gonna call this one a draw just because they're both capable of 20K accelerations and five to 600 millimeters per second print speeds. So these are both insanely fast machines and they come out roughly even in that regard. Now another thing that people like to see is a printer that's jam packed with all of the latest features. And in that regard, the P1P I feel falls behind just a little bit compared to the K1. So first of all, the K1 is fully enclosed. So that unlocks the ability to print higher temperature materials such as ABS, nylon, and polycarbonate. You can add an enclosure to the P1P, but that's gonna increase the cost of that machine pretty significantly. Most of the kits that I see online cost between one and $200 in order to enclose this machine. I would argue that if you really want an enclosed printer, you should just go up to the X1C, which comes from the factory with a full enclosure, as well as a bunch of other features. So thanks to its full enclosure, the Creality K1 gets a point. This was an early unit of the P1P, so mine didn't come with the camera. Now, the P1P ships with a camera pre-installed. So in terms of a really practical and useful feature, the P1P takes a point for having a camera. You should keep in mind that the Creality K1 has a little upgrade port for the camera. If you take a look in here... Oh, um, hold on. Anyways, as I was saying, in terms of an upgrade path, the Creality K1 has a little USB plug up here, but as a stock machine, it doesn't come with that camera so I really can't give it a point here. Another feature that they've added to this P1P since its launch is this little LED light bar. So in terms of lighting, we've got another tie situation here. I also wanna go over the overall look and design of these machines. 
Not design in the engineering sense, but design in the artistic and aesthetic sense. Now, it's no secret that this Bamboo Lab P1P is a bit of a bare bones machine, and you can kind of see it, it looks like it's missing a few parts. They've really stripped it down to the core components required for fast and efficient functioning, and to get the price down as much as possible while maintaining all of that speed and quality and acceleration that you get with the X1C. So because it's so stripped down, I think it's gotta lose a point compared to the Creality K1 over here. The K1 was clearly designed with aesthetics and visual appeal in mind. Just look at this frame, all these reflective, nice panels on the sides. It really looks amazing. So you really gotta give credit where credit's due and the K1's gotta pick up a point for having really good looks. So right now the score is three to two, but going back to the P1P, let's talk about some of the features that it has that really elevates it above the competition. Something that pretty much no 3D printer manufacturer to date has implemented, other than Bamboo Lab and I guess Chidi with their new machines have done this, is they've got an integrated filament slicer. So it's this little lever on the side of the machine that if you push it, it'll cut your filament and allow you to pull the filament out without having to preheat the hot end first. And that makes filament changeovers really simple. Another feature that the P1P has is it's got the little purge bucket at the back of the machine. So the P1P takes a huge win for that material change out system. It's really nice and uh, it's got to get a point for that. When it comes to the part cooling solutions for both of these machines, it should be noted that the K1 has an 8 watt blower fan built onto the tool head, while the Bamboo Lab P1P only has a 4 watt part cooling fan. In addition to that part cooling fan on the tool head, the K1 also has this side enclosure mounted part cooling fan just to help things firm up faster. Personally, I don't think that makes that much of a difference. On the P1P, I find that the part cooling is adequate to get good enough print quality. I would call it maybe a half point for the Creality K1 just because it does have those overkill part cooling fans and that might help in some rare instances like if you're doing a vase mode print with extremely low layer times or just printing really small stuff that you want to print out really quickly. All right, now we're digging a little bit deeper into the guts of these machines. On the K1 and P1P, they're both using a Core XY construction with a three lead screw design for the Z axis. The K1 has some small advantages in terms of the size of the stepper motors and the diameter of the pulley gears on there. So in theory, you should be able to reach higher maximum speeds on the K1 but the P1P is using a carbon fiber rod construction on the top that um, initially I was skeptical of, but since people have been running these machines for thousands of hours, it's safe to say that's a pretty reliable solution and eventually that might wear out, but it's not gonna happen for thousands of hours. So it's not worth losing too much sleep over it. If you look at the belt pathing on the K1, it's not quite as clean as what you have on the P1P. The P1P belt routing is really nice. The belts stay straight regardless of where in the print volume that tool head is versus on the K1 something I noticed is that when you move the print head all the way forward it starts to create a little bit of an angle with one of the belts and it's a really small angle that's unlikely to affect anything in a major way but the cleanliness and attention to detail on the belt pathing on the P1P is appreciated. So overall the motion stages on these machines are very similar. However, I'm gonna give a half point to the P1P because it pulls ahead just a little bit in terms of their execution. And another reason why I think the Bamboo Lab deserves a half point over the K1 is that they're using those carbon fiber rods which should significantly reduce the weight of the moving mass when this printer is running. Since the K1 has uh, steel rods, those are much heavier and as you're moving in the Y direction, basically forwards and backwards on this tool head, you're having to move those rods around and they're pretty heavy. So while I'd like to give a point to Creality for using those larger stepper motors, they might have to use those larger stepper motors to compensate for the added weight of those steel rods. There's only so much we can learn about these machines without turning them on. So let's fire these printers up and see what the user experience is like and see how they print. When you turn on the P1P, it makes some small little noises, but overall it's a very quiet machine. None of the fans are spinning when this machine is at idle, so that helps it stay super quiet and stealthy. When we turn on the K1, the lights come on to let you know it's alive, and you've got just a tiny bit of fan noise coming from the base of the machine. I think that's the power supply or motherboard fan. I think it's quiet enough that it's not really gonna cause an issue for me. Also, with regard to noise, uh, the P1P emits a very high frequency whining noise. It's like a really high-pitched squealing. 
I think it's probably around the 16 kilohertz range. So if you're older and you can't hear those frequencies anyways, then this probably isn't gonna bother you. Now that both these printers are turned on, you can see we've got a nice little touch screen here on the K1. Really nice, it lets you preview your models, change settings, control the machine. It's a nice and responsive touch screen with great colors. So this is a really good interface here on the K1. If we take a look at the P1P, it looks like we've got an old uh, Game Boy attached to the top here. So it's a, a bit more of a primitive display and it makes using the machine a little bit more difficult. So we're putting one point on the board for Creality for this nice touchscreen interface. Also on the P1P, if you want to run it using an SD card or flash drive, using some kind of portable media that you plug into your computer, put your G-code on and then plug into the machine, uh, the only interface you have is a little SD card up in the top here. It's one of those tiny little micro SD cards and they're really a pain to remove and install. And it's just a workflow that really wasn't well thought out for this machine. Really, they want you to be going through the Bamboo Cloud or using the network functionality to upload prints and operate this machine. So uh, you're kind of forced into that route. Versus on the K1, you have this nice little USB flash drive. You can plug this into your computer, upload your models, plug this in here. And it's just a much more well thought out workflow for offline operation. So now let's talk about the unboxing and setup experience for both of these machines. For the K1, it comes in a big box. You have to undo a couple of screws that are holding the bed in place, and then you're pretty much good to go. You have to go through a little uh, setup process using this touch screen, but that's nice and simple. And when you get to the part where it wants you to hook it up to Creality Cloud or connect it to your network, I think you can just hit the skip button. I just did this earlier, so there's a nice little button up in the top right that says skip. You can just press that and keep this as a fully offline machine. However, on the P1P, um, since this is a new device, I'll just take you through the process right here, right now. This is basically the screen that you get when you turn this machine on for the first time. Uh, select region. All right, and it says, scan the QR code to configure Wi-Fi and user account on Bamboo Handy app. Uh, and then it has my serial number there. Um, I'm gonna click setup later and see what that's all about. So let's run the self-test routine to check the status of your printer. Okay, while it's going through the self-test, it's kind of demonstrating one of the features on this machine, which is the automatic bed leveling system. So underneath we've got three load cells that basically allow the printer to tell when the nozzle is contacting the bed. This is the first printer that I've seen that uses this approach. The K1 also uses this basically an identical approach. I wonder where they got the idea. Okay, so now we're going through our input shaping. As you can hear, it can get pretty loud. When the machine is actually in operation, I don't notice that much noise coming from the motion system. Both of these machines are pretty smart and they take a lot of the guesswork out of setting up and calibrating your machine, which I think is really the next stage in uh, desktop 3D printers, is they're gonna be a whole lot easier to use. So in terms of the setup and calibration process, I think it's really a tie. On older Creality machines, it's always been a real pain to get them set up and working properly. You have to install things and put a bunch of screws and bolts together, and then you have to calibrate it and make sure the first layer is going down properly. There's a whole lot of work to do there, but on the K1, they've really changed that and made it a much easier user experience, much more similar to what you have on Bamboo Lab machines, where it's kind of like you plug it in, it automatically runs these tests and calibrates itself, and then you're ready to print. Oh, you can hear just barely a little bit of resonance going on here. But really not much noise at all from this motion system, even when it's trying to excite those resonant frequencies. Okay, so in terms of setup and calibration, I'm gonna give both of these machines a tie. I was initially going to give a point to the K1, just because from what I remembered, the P1P forced you into using an app to set it up. But now I see they've added a little skip button there so you don't have to connect it to the cloud if you don't want to and you can run the machine offline, which is great. So thanks to improvements from both Creality and Bamboo Lab, I think they're on par in terms of the setup and calibration and neither of them is getting a point here. While this K1 is going through its bed leveling procedure, I'm just gonna fire up the slicers and slice some models and we'll get these machines running and do some comparisons there. First layer quality is my game. Now I know I'm gonna get, oh my goodness. Oh, shit. I'm just gonna keep printing. So I'm calling this the Benchy Tensile Test. Ah. All right, so that went about how I expected it to go. 